Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new G22 BMW 4 Series. Before we take a look at the car in detail, I just thought I'd share with you the specification of the car. I think it's important to share this with you guys just so you can compare budgets etc and understand what option the car has and what it wouldn't have as standard. So obviously it's a G22 420 IM Sport Coupe, they start at £38,750. It's finished in Arctic Race Blue Metallic, which is a further £670 option. And then it's got the standard interior, which is a black with grey contrast stitching, Vanessa leather. The subtotal of that is £39,420 before options. In terms of options, we've got the M Sport Package Pro, which includes M Sport Braking System, BMW Individual Lights Shadow Line, M Seat Belts. Harman Kardon surround sound speaker system and BMW individual high gloss shadow line with extended content. Now this is showing us zero pounds, but that's because it's included in the M Sport Pro package, which will come to shortly. Next is the Technology Plus package, which is a further £3,650, which includes driving assistant professional, parking assistant plus, head up display, BMW drive recorder, enhanced Bluetooth with wireless charging, BMW gesture control and Wi-Fi hotspot preparation. We then move on to the comfort pack, which is priced at £1,950 and includes the heated steering wheel, powered booted operation, comfort access, electric front seats and driver memory, lumbar support and extended storage. Finally, we move on to the M Sport Pro package, which is £2,500, which includes the 19 inch bicolor 797M light double spoke alloy wheels adaptive M Sport suspension and the sun protection glass. We've then got a few standard items on the car that come with the M Sport spec, which are the run flat tires, LED front fog lights, M steering wheel, and M aerodynamic body styling, which takes the total of the options to 8,100 pounds to give a total purchase price of the car of 47,000 pounds, 520 as tested. So that gives you an idea of the sort of price of car that we're dealing with here. When I first saw this car, the first thing I saw was this grill. Um, and so we're going, to, we're going to address that in this video. I'm going to tell you what this car has been like to live with. Um, I've had it for a day or so now. And yeah, I'm just going to go over what it's like to live with, how it performs. Is it all just looks or is it actually a good car? So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So the car I've got in front of me is the brand new 4 Series. It's a 420i. And for those of you that are interested, it's the B48 engine. Uh, it's a two litre, uh, four cylinder, twin scroll turbo, single turbo unit, 184 brake horsepower, 135 kilowatts for those of you um, down under. And as you can see, yeah, it's just a lovely looking car. This is finished in Arctic Race blue uh, so it's sort of a well I'll bring you in a bit closer as you can hear the engine's running um, because it's freezing out to be honest it's like a sort of dark um, earthy blue it looks more blue on camera than it does in real life uh, but uh, yeah so let's let's get on to talking about how this car looks now when BMW unveiled this car this area here was um, quite a hot topic. If we come and have a look, we've got two rather large grills. Now BMW, when they designed the car, were sort of doing it as a tribute to the old classic BMWs. Now, sort of pre-war and post-war BMWs, they had rather large grills such as this. So I think the designers were going for a recreation, as it were, of this. Now, to be honest, when I first saw it, I was horrified. Um, but actually, seeing it in person, it looks better with a number plate across it. Um, it doesn't look like such a big gaping hole. Um, yeah, it's just a nice looking car. This is an M Sport Pro version. So the, this is where all the black bits come from. Uh, the, that is usually chrome, um, but this is the M Sport Pro. So we've got some nicer wheels. Um, all the chrome's blacked out, but I'll go through that later. We've got the LED individual lights uh, as an option as well. And as you can see, they do look pretty nice. Um, this new sort of sloping front. Now, a lot of these sports coupes in this category are going for this. I mean, the F-Type's got it. Uh, I'm, I'm even going to go as far as saying the Aston Martin Vantage. They've all got this sort of low slung bonnet line um, with the headlights sort of underneath the bonnet. And I, 
I personally quite like it. I think BMW have done it best so far. Um, I'm sure we're going to see plenty more manufacturers doing it. Uh, you've then got the, the haunches that run down the edge of the car here. Makes it look nice and muscular towards the rear. I can imagine the M4 with the flared arches is going to look amazing uh, with that as well. Um, but yeah, it's just, as a, as a side profile, it's a lovely, lovely shaped car. We've got a lovely view in the background here and an ambulance making their way to someone in an emergency. Um, and yeah, as you can see, the future starts here. And I think this is what this car is about for BMW. It's about sort of introducing a new type of styling language uh, for the rest of their line out. We've seen it in the 3 Series that's due. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a good looking car in my opinion. You can get it in the Grand Coupe, which slightly extends the wheelbase and gives you a, a rear door as well. Um, but I think, to be honest, you may as well just buy a 3 Series uh, if you if that's, if that's you want sort of five-seater capability. This car, I think, is definitely suited to the Coupe shape. As we come around to the rear here, you'll see we've got the twin exhaust pipes um, and these, these vents uh, to make it look quite aggressive. Those vents, I believe, are fake they don't go anywhere um, but they're a nice little styling cue we've also got like a, a diffuser here as well and um, there's gonna be no prizes for guessing where this car has come from today so um i'll stick all cotswolds information in the description below because they've got some fantastic deals on this car um, as well as many others i've said it before uh, we've ordered several cars from them and we've actually got one on order from them now uh the three series hybrids so yeah they're a great great company um so back to it we've got the led relighting as well again very very stylish with the 420i badge um i do like these fiber optic lights i've got to admit it is a yes yeah, a nice little option but like i said guys this is a nice looking car now this is going up against sort of the audi a5 uh, the mercedes c-class coupe and personally i think this is the best looking out of the bunch it's available with a whole host of engines as well. You've got the 430i, uh, which is a derivative of the B58 engine. Uh, for those of you who don't know, BMW have now created sort of like a modular engine. So this basis of this car with the four-cylinder is also used in the six-cylinder, the B58, which is everyone, the one everyone loves. It's the 440i, uh, that's 356 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds this 420i though is no slouch either 0 to 60 in 7.5 but to be honest it feels a lot quicker than that it's it certainly puts you back in your seat when you put the foot down so um what we'll do is we'll take a look at the engine now because bmw like to dress up their engines so i thought we'll take another look and uh yeah see what's under there okay then so here we are with the beating heart of the car uh, so like I said, yeah, it's the B48 engine, 184 brake horsepower, uh, 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds, and 221 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Um, it is pretty much BMW's go-to petrol engine for their sort of entry-level cars. It's been used since 2015, and BMW just sort of tweak it uh, per application. Uh, the bonnet doesn't open as much as I thought it would. It's a bit of a random one. But let's be honest, the majority of the people that own this car are going to be people that just take it to a dealer to have everything done. A lot of these cars are going to be bought on finance, covered by warranty, including service packages, etc. So as an ownership point of view, a new one isn't going to be too bad at all. The car's got the optional 19-inch alloys as well. Uh, and they, they do set it apart. The, the 18s are a bit small. Um, on this car but actually yeah the uh, the 19s are very nice indeed so um, yeah that's sort of a brief look at the exterior of the car I think now what we'll do is we'll take you on the interior show you what it's like inside um, because I think that's where this car sort of shines it's a lovely car to drive and be in so um, yeah let's get into it so then we've opened up frames door here and um, we are met with the interior for the new 4 series now this interior is very much in keeping with BMW's latest interior styling quirks as you can see uh, we've got suede with aluminium we've got the 8-speed ZF gearbox digital displays here and ambient lighting what I'll do is I'll get in the car and give you a tour um, because it is lovely so 
you may notice we have some flashing purple lights. Now, in real life, you can't see them, but what they are is essentially infrared scanners that uh, scan your attention level um, and basically work out whether you're paying attention to the car or not. So, quite a good little feature. We've got our lovely digital display here. Uh, as you can see, we'll um, go through the various modes. We've got, it's quite a strange uh, little setup. We have like a power meter, like the Rolls Royces have your power reserve meter. We then have a, obviously your speed going around the outside and the speed is displayed in here. We've then got our map as well that you can sort of toggle on and off. We have our coolant temperature or engine temperature down there. And then we also have our fuel gauge here. If we move it into sports mode, those, are, those purple lights are getting annoying, aren't they? We then get slightly more aggressive. The color changes to red from orange and we go towards a more driver focused setup with the rev rev, um, rev dial there, uh, or the tachometer, and then the speed and everything like that. Eco Pro goes different again. We go blue and actually you can see your fuel economy here is sort of prioritized. Uh, this car in terms of fuel economy is currently averaging 25.6. It's got 163 miles on it and I haven't been driving it very sensibly. So that's probably why. Realistically, you can probably look to get late 30s if you're driving it sensibly. We've then got our multifunction steering wheel here. We've got our climate control, uh, sorry, our cruise controls, uh, limiters and everything like that. This has got the adaptive cruise control, which is really nice. You can set the distance here. Now I must admit the maximum distance you can set is sort of the minimum distance I'd be comfortable with driving at. So um, that was a little interesting to start off with. Um, that's, it's a good system. Uh, that along with the heads up display you might just be able to see it there they work quite well because what you can do the car knows the speed limit and actually it will ask you if you'd like to set your cruise control to the speed limit each time it changes all you need to do is just tap this set button as just there so it's yeah a good little system there BMW steering wheels nowadays are quite nice aren't they they've got the stitching on the center here um, we've also got the nice thick rim as well and this one has a heated steering wheel which is a very very welcome sight on the day like today currently five and a half degrees uh, wet and miserable so uh, yeah we've then got our stereo controls here um, now I mentioned this in the 5 series review that I did the 325 series about the volume being sort of horizontal rather than uh, vertical there that was a bit of a frustration for me but you then got your, your track skip buttons and various controls down here um this is the m sport steering wheel obviously uh, because this is the m sport pro but uh yeah it's just a nice it's a nice quality item to hold it's a bit bit sort of um squidgy as well so you can get a good grip on it we then move on to our rather large center display here now this is very pretty much identical in every bmw it's touchscreen uh, it's lovely it's very high resolution um, it does get fingerprints if you touch it so i tend to use the iDrive here um, which obviously back in the day was very controversial but it is probably now industry leading in the way that you use it we've got your media here uh, you've got loads of options um, i've got my phone connected currently we've also you can log into spotify uh, you can screen mirror, you can do all sorts really. Uh, we've got your radio as well. Uh, this does have gesture control, so if we go like that, it will change the song, which is pretty cool. Turn that off. Um, we then have our map, which again is rather big and lovely. You can pinch and zoom. It's just, it's like a big iPad. It doesn't lag too much, as you can see, if you're really Sort of chuck it out then we get a bit of lag um as more sort of detail is required um and now we're actually looking at the world i don't know why anyone would like to do that but um just tap that to go back to yourself you've also got traffic information you can split screen it so you can have say your uh, your map there and then you can well for some reason now we've got two maps but um yeah it's a good little system the sat nav uh, it's better than a lot that i've dealt with before we've then got our phone details which is everything you need on here which isn't bad at all moving on to the car section we have driving information 
shows the car there You've got various bits such as the journey data sports display driving style analysis which i think will be quite funny um uh, it hasn't recorded that yet it might be while i'm driving you've got your energy flow as well so there's various bits like that if we move down to vehicle status you've got everything involved with the vehicle uh, that you could ever need to know like i said this is brand new this car 163 163 miles even so um it certainly shouldn't have any issues and it doesn't we've then got caring car which is in my opinion a bit of a gimmick um it will relax you um with sort of a pre-planned interior climate settings um so it'll sort of massage you and all that sort of stuff adjust the air con play sort of soothing sounds and yeah it's 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 okay i'm not sure anyone would ever ask for something like that but it's handy then got your driver profiles where you can set your car uh, to how you like it the different keys it's a bit like a computer you can log in with different people uh, so yeah and then you've got your own handbook as well so that's it for the infotainment system we've then got our online apps um, you can do apple carplay android auto which very nicely is wireless uh, so as soon as i bluetooth my phone to the system here it was completely wireless which is very nice other interior bits as you can see we've got this lovely uh, sort of it's well it looks nailed it's not it's smooth but it's a aluminium which is very nice um, cold to the touch which again is nice got an uh, aluminium sort of center console here um, with these buttons and these dials these dials are knurled and they feel quite nice um, and it's just yeah a, a premium place to be it, it even moves on to the paddles here they're all aluminium um, we've got the door handle and everything like that everything where you touch regularly is done very nicely this car comes with heated seats and everything standard which is nice you've then got our traditional uh, TD controls down here We've then got this cluster here. Now this is BMW's new style of gear knob. Um, it's very sort of minimal. Just press the unlock button and put it in drive. The, the diagram for that's here. Got our engine start stop here, which uh, threw me to start off with. We've then got our auto stop start off, parking assistance, uh, the camera system as well, which I'll show you shortly. Traction control off, which doesn't really ever turn off properly, but it does Sort of reduce itself we've then got our various modes here so sport is obviously the sporty setting this has got the adaptive dampers so it stiffens up the suspension stiffens up the steering improves throttle response etc we've then got comfort which slackens off the throttle, the throttle response smooths out the gear changes and loosens the suspension to make it a much more compliant ride we've then got eco pro uh, which basically optimizes everything for economy and then we've got adaptive which will basically work out what you like to do uh, it will be economical when you're driving sensibly but then stiffen everything up and be much more aggressive if you get on it we've then got a handbrake release here uh, a bit of dead space here which is a bit odd we've then got our iDrive controls which has got a touchpad and everything like that as you saw earlier we did gesture controls uh, where you can sort of turn volume up and down and things like that there you go a little prompt there we've got a nice big cubby here with a wireless charging pad now my phone is a samsung galaxy s20 ultra with a case on it doesn't fit on this wireless charging pad which is a bit frustrating with it off it just about fits so it's a bit of a disappointing thing from bmw the fact that they hadn't accounted for the fact that people may put case on the phone um rather than just doing it on the maximum size of the phone as it is then got two cup holders and a usb port here then got a rather large um, armrest nice leather coated and padded fairly uh decent bit of storage we've got a usb c port here and led lighting nice i can see that getting full up with stuff um if i own this car we've then got our led strip lighting here which you can change the colors of it moves around onto the door handles also in the footwell as well i don't know if you can see it there so um yeah that's it for the front of the car oh we haven't checked the glove box out have we decent size you can definitely fit gloves in there not that anyone ever does that um so let's take a look at the rear seats 
I've actually missed a few things, haven't I? We've got our lovely lighting pod up here, uh, LED lighting. I like the way they sort of diffuse the light with that, that's quite nice. Uh, our SOS button. We then have our onboard computer stalk with the automatic headlight switch and everything like that. We then have our wipers, obviously automatic on this model with the various settings. Uh, and then we have our headlight controls and just general lighting and a cubby down here, which is fairly useful. Um, let's have a look at the back seats. We've also got the Harman Kardon on this model and this sound system is fantastic. I mentioned it in the 5 Series review and I'll mention it again in this review. It's a very, very good system. Uh, plays a lot of music very, very well. So uh, if I was ordering a new BMW, I would probably get one of those fitted. Um, in terms of rear space, oh, we've actually got these nice, nice M Sport seat belts as well. All you need to do is pull the little handle on here, lean the seat forwards, and it will automatically move out of the way for you. Uh, then we've got rear seating. Now, I'm quite a big person, I'm not going to fit in here, so I'm not going to try just in case I break something, but sort of small people or children will fit in here perfectly. And let's be honest, if you're looking for good amounts of rear space, you would buy a 3 Series. Anyway, do get a ski through, um, which is an optional extra, so if you wanted that, you'd have to pay extra. So if, you, if you're taking this car down to Maribel, then option that. But um, all you need to do then is just pull that back and it will do this. Let's take a look at the boot now, coming back to the rear of the car. I do like the rear of this car, I must admit. I know I've covered it already, but it is a nice looking rear end. Uh, now we should have the uh, foot operated one, but either I've got the engine on, so it doesn't like the fact that I'm doing it, or I'm doing it wrong. So we'll uh, use the button that comes on the door here has that opened the boot no, it's not like it because the keys in my pocket there we go tailgate open electrically operated which is nice and we have rather cavernous boot space uh, you could definitely fit your luggage in there especially if you're going to Maribel you can fit all your skiing crap in there pretty easily uh, you can fit pretty much anything that you would need to realistically on a car like this like I said if you're gonna buy if you if you're looking for interior space then you're gonna buy a three series touring or something you're not gonna buy a four series this is this car is for touring um, driving around enjoying life um, without children pretty much so we've then got various storage nets uh, a nice little cubby in there with a toolkit um, let's have a look at that Oh, it's a towing eye, it's not a toolkit. But um, you can forgive me for thinking that there might have been a toolkit. I probably can't get that back in now. We've got our seat releases here. So if you really were asking for space, just pull that and that. And then I'm gonna to have to get in and push it. There we go. So you could make lots of space if you're willing to just your seat um, so any sort of impromptu uh, tip runs or anything like that is covered there and then we've also got the 12 volt sockets and obligatory BMW first aid kit so uh, yeah that's it for the interior guys uh, how about we take this car out for a spin we'll show you what it drives like and we will show you or I'll talk about what it's like to live with. Okay then guys, so you join me inside the 4 Series now and um, yeah, we're gonna take you for a little drive and discuss the car in a bit more detail. So initial driving impressions, I've done nearly 40, 50, well, four, between 40 and 50 miles in this car now and I must say, I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, despite the fact it's only the 420i, it certainly doesn't lack pace. Um, so I thought we'd take it on a bit of a back road. We're gonna do a bit of town driving first. Uh, we've got a few speed limits, but then 
we'll be able to open the car up when we get into a national speed limit zone and I think I've just had mud thrown up thrown all over my car but um yeah so trying a different slightly different camera angle today but what I'll do is I'll go through all the features in terms of the adaptive cruise control as well uh, because I think they're they're worth knowing so the car is now offering us the option to go to 40 miles an hour to set the cruise control to that I'm just gonna hit set uh, because the car knows the speed limit and it will take us up to that as you can see here we've got the green in front of the car showing we've got our lane sort of system, monitoring system as well and initial impressions of that is that the lane departure control can be a bit sensitive uh, I've, I've managed to turn it down now but it was getting to the point where it was sort of I was trying to do sort of a bit of sporty driving where you sort of get over the over the white line uh, sort of here for example the car would be trying to pull the steering wheel out of your hand and pull you back into the middle of the lane so that that got a bit tiresome after a while so I've changed that now and that's sorted and now I've done that the car is sort of transformed we're in eco pro mode at the moment and you'll not be able to see a mpg read out there so on a sort of a flat plane at 50 miles an hour you're looking probably at achieving 50 plus miles per gallon obviously it's not perfect and averaging um you're probably going to look at low 30 low to mid 30s in a realistic sense um on a roads and b roads etc so you can't complain too much it's only a uh, two litre petrol with a twin scroll tur turbocharger so it's it's not the ideal economy setup especially if it's um sort of in its sportiest mode which we're going to put it in now so we're going to hit sport mode here and as you can see, we've got the acknowledgement on the centre console there. You might have heard the noise come on a bit more, and we have um, some more aggressive dials here. So I'm going to knock the cruise control off and give her some beans, see what she's got. Now immediately you notice the throttle response is much more uh, there. Uh, we've got much more sound coming into the cabin now, and that's actually pumped in by BMW uh, through the speakers. And the cool thing is that it actually sounds very um, straight sixy, a bit like a, the, this engine's older brother, the B58, uh, which is a fantastic sounding engine. We're gonna hit set now for the 30 zone. The car's gonna slow us down and take us into the zone without us speeding. Um, and then we're gonna follow, let the car do the work. It's really nice, the system. It's got the, the uh, distance control as well so it will notice this car up ahead it will slow up uh, we're then going to move over and it shouldn't slam the brakes on no it doesn't that's good uh, and what it will do is it will just follow vehicles in front it will stop at traffic lights it will go all the way down uh, to zero and then set off again so in stop go traffic it's a fantastic system i had it set to 60 miles an hour um, and the system was able to go from 60 to stopping and then back up to 60 again uh, without any input from me so um we've got a car coming here i took over there because i didn't trust the system but probably would have been absolutely fine so we can uh, reset it back on and what's nice is there's no sort of minimum speed required for the system to work Quite a few vehicles parked on the road today and as you can see the car is now slowing down and coming to a stop i'm going to indicate rounds and it will go i don't know if you can see my feet but um i made no input whatsoever there the car did all that by itself which is really really cool so this is sort of the way bmw are going nowadays they are introducing these systems that are designed to make our life easier to be honest and they do they work i mean this is probably one of the best systems i've dealt with uh, I had the 5 Series with the system on before, but it seems that they're getting better and better, BMW, at doing this sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, we'll um, speed up out of this 30 zone into the national speed limit. And the car is, yeah, it's, it's quite tightly sprung. Um, the ride is quite rough, uh, especially on these sort of British B roads, wind sport modes, so that probably doesn't help. This car, as I mentioned earlier, is fitted with the adaption and the, the optional adaptive dampers, uh, which means that they will stiffen up or get firmer when you put it into sport mode, and then they'll uh, relax a bit more when you put it into comfort mode. So, just to ease off there, 
come through the bend, put our foot down out the bend. So you see there's a bit of a delay there between me putting my foot down, but you can really hear that six cylinder sound being pumped in despite the fact it's a two cylinder. I find that quite interesting. I think that's the BMW, the, the sound that BMW wants to be synonymous with. Oh, it does sound good, even though it's fake. But yeah, as you can see, the car handles really nicely. It's sort of glued to the road, fairly confident aspiring, doesn't get upset over bumps. I mean, even if we put it into comfort mode, it's it's a fairly sporty ride, so we'll do that now. Um, and as you can see, the dials change and everything. Instead of a rev meter now, we have a, I think it's, it's, it's a bit like the Rolls-Royce power reserve meter, but the opposite, if that makes sense. So it's, it's reading what, power you're using rather than what you have in reserve it's even telling me that there's a giveaway here which is quite cool I'm not sure if you guys can see the head-up display um, but it is a lovely little feature to have it means you don't have to take your eyes off the road you can um, be driving along as normal and be able to see the speed limit and have various bits and pieces at your disposal you can even sort out your music through it which is nice. I had to lift it up slightly uh, because in my driving position it is uh, a little too low. But yeah, as you can see, the car holds the road very well through these bends. Oh. So the car actually held the road so hard there that um, the camera flew off. So apologies for that. We'll resume our drive now. Um, I thought I'd better stop so you guys didn't have a view of my crutch the entire time. So yeah, where was I? Basically saying that this car is a lovely, lovely place to be. It's a lovely place to drive. Um, it's a jack of all trades as well. I mean, it's it can be ec economical. And I think that's the, the benefit of having a modern car nowadays is that they are designed to do everything for you. So you can put it into Eco Pro mode and get good motorway mileage. Um, you can be sporty when you want. You can be comfortable when you want. They are so many cars now built into one. Uh, which is really nice i think i think the m sport adaptive suspension is a must if you've got the 19 inch alloys like this car has uh, because it really does make a difference in terms of sort of um I'm trying to think of a word here dampening the stiff sidewalls of the run flat tires and also the these roads are horrendous today aren't they so muddy um also, yeah, the, the stiffness of the run flat and the suspension is just supple enough that it's capable or manageable on a bumpy road like this. But um, yeah, it's it's a lovely, lovely car to drive. I know I've said it already, but I'm going to say it again. I'm quite blessed with the country roads that we have here in terms of the fact that they really do allow you to have some fun. And they're fairly safe as well, if you, if you know them and you drive them sensibly. Even through compression and things like that, the car feels stable. It's nice and nimble as well. The steering is very direct and the brakes are very responsive as well, which is always um, a bonus. When getting out of my Volvo into this was quite a shock uh, because it suddenly did everything immediately, whereas the Volvo is a bit more sedate. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great. The chassis feels good. Uh, like I said, it's nice and compliant over the bumps and it does, manage itself very well it doesn't get upset over little bumps or anything like that the only the only fault i do have is there's a little uh delay between the kick down of the gearbox and it's it's enough that it could be an issue if you need to suddenly shoot out somewhere uh, so that's something worth bearing in mind but as a as an everyday driver this car is fantastic if you're if you're not too worried about getting super miles per gallon uh, the petrol's good fun is available obviously in the diesels as well um, so if you are worried about fuel economy get yourself a 420d um, then you'll be well away you'll be getting 60 plus to the gallon on the motorway and still having fun now although this is 184 horsepower or some people say only 184 horsepower um, only the 420i and only seven and a half seconds to 60 uh, fairly slow by modern standard or fairly average by modern standards um 
it feels like a fast fun car it's quite a small car i think that helps it looks big from the outside but once you're in it it sort of hugs around you and you feel like you feel like a little race car really it's it's a quite a it's quite i would say it's a cramped cabin i would prefer a bit more leg room or quite a wide person as some of you may know so um being able to sort of spread my legs would be a bit nicer but we've got this sort of compartment here on the 5 series i didn't have that issue and i think that's just because the platform that the 5 series is developed on is a wider platform in general than this car this is obviously based on the same platform as the 3 series but like i say guys this is a lovely lovely car to drive indeed so um what i'll do is i think we will just do a bit more driving now without me talking so you guys can experience what the car is like um, sort of from your point of view without me talking over it Okay then guys, so that brings us towards the last part of the video. We've taken the car for a drive, we've shown you around it, shown you the interior as well, and I thought I'd come to this rather idyllic location here. Uh, we're in golden hour to sort of sum up my final thoughts on the car. Now, the main headlines of this car are all about the styling. Uh, this styling has been controversial since day one. However, it has grown on me and I'll be totally honest, it doesn't really bother me anymore at all. This car has had a lot of attention uh, during the day that I've had it um, and it's nearly all been positive. Um, everyone's been complimenting me on the style and sort of how the car looks. They can tell it's a premium car and I think although it's different, uh, it does look like a BMW. So um, from that point of view, I don't think we have too many issues. The rest of the shape of the car is just lovely. Uh, if it wasn't for that front grille, I, th I 
I don't think we'd have anyone agreeing or suggesting that it wasn't the best looking car on the for sale right now. In terms of the, the sort of the rear haunches here, uh, the coupe body style, it is gorgeous. And if we come to the rear as well, it is equally, I think this is probably the best angle of the car. It looks mean um, and purposeful. And in this Arctic race blue, uh, which I, I must admit I quite like uh, as a 670 pound option, then yeah it's definitely a compelling package in terms of engines i would probably be tempted to go for the 420d instead of the 420i in terms of as a daily driver just because this petrol engine has struggled to achieve sort of much more than 35 to the gallon whereas if you got that diesel it would definitely be almost double that um in certain circumstances but as a car it's fantastic my ultimate one would probably be the 440 X drive, um, just to have that B58 engine, the uh, three, three litre twin turbo straight six, I think would be a fantastic match for this car. And it would sort of give the car the performance to go with the looks. Overall, as a car to own, I think it's a very promising package. Um, obviously, if you've got the service and maintenance and a warranty and everything, then there's definitely uh, a lovely ownership experience to be had um, i can pretty much see the owners of these cars going down sort of south of france uh, going over to Maribel using the ski hatch that sort of thing but you're going to be either an older person or a young person with no family really this isn't going to be a family car but um overall guys yeah i've been absolutely uh, smitten with this car i've really enjoyed having it for the day i'd like to thank BMW Cotswold Hereford or Cotswold BMW Hereford for lending it to me for the day uh, we've had the 5 series from them we've ordered our 3 series from them and now they've given us this 4 series to test as well so um, I'll stick all the link in the, their link in the description below and all their information will be there so if you like the look of this car or you're looking in the market for any other BMW then please do give them a shout they do have some fantastic deals um, from me that's it um we'll leave you now with a few more shots of the car and um yeah i'll see you in the next video cheers